Well, we are continuing our series where we are learning how to practice peace, how to grow and cultivate peace in our lives. Last week, we talked about focusing on the things that are actually in our hands. And for our text today, we're actually going to skip over an amazing healing. That's right. Even, even though healing a man covered with leprosy is very impressive, we're going to skip right over it. We're going to focus on the very last verse in this story. I bet you already know that Jesus healed lepers. But did you know that Jesus routinely did what is mentioned in the last verse in our text today? Let's find out. Luke chapter 5, beginning with verse 12. Once when he was in one of the cities, there was a man covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. Then Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him. And he ordered him to tell no one, Go, he said, show yourself to the priest, and as Moses commanded, make an offering for your cleansing for a testimony to them. But now more than ever the word about Jesus spread abroad. Many crowds would gather to hear him and be cured of their diseases. But... Here's the key verse. But Jesus would withdraw to deserted places and pray. Let me read that one more time. But he would withdraw to deserted places and pray. This is the word of the Lord, so thanks be to God. Well, since we are recognizing All Saints Day today, I've been thinking about the families I have met with over the years while planning funerals. And I often ask families, you know, is there like a, a trademark story or, or phrases that really, you know, capture the essence of their dearly departed? And, and oftentimes someone will, you know, like call out a memorable phrase and everyone else goes, oh yeah, oh yeah, I forgot about that. For example, I can still audibly hear my grandmother saying, well, you didn't eat much. Or my, uh, my grandmother, who is still alive, often says, endeavor to persevere. Those phrases stick with me. Uh, as you think about some of the, of the phrases, or, or as you think about some of your dearly departed loved ones, do any of those memorable phrases or memorable stories or notable habits come to mind? In our text today, we get one of those, oh yeah, moments for Jesus. We just heard Luke chapter 5, verse 16, but he would withdraw to deserted places to pray. Let me add to that, Mark chapter 1, verse 35, which says, in the morning, while it was still dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And... Let me add another gospel. Matthew chapter 14, verse 23 said, And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all remembered that Jesus regularly, habitually went off by himself to pray. And so they tossed in these like single verses. It's kind of like, a, like an, oh yeah, line in the midst of their narratives. It wasn't the main action, like healing a leper, but all three of them thought it was important to share this habit that Jesus had of going off by himself to pray. Jesus had a habit of taking a breath, taking a pause, taking time away from the infinite demands on his life and ministry. In fact, Matthew, Mark, and Luke all highlight the same three components of Jesus' habit of taking a breath. Three components. They all three highlight these. He went to a place to be silent and alone, and he prayed. In the midst of the whirlwind three years of his ministry, Jesus regularly paused to take a breath by going to a place to be silent and alone and pray. Let's take those in order. Our first tool for taking a deep breath uh, and practicing peace in our lives is to find a place. 
In our text today, we heard how Jesus went to deserted places. Even on the night that he was going to be betrayed, Jesus went by himself into the Garden of Gethsemane. Remember, he took you know, three of his disciples and then went on a little further by himself. The Garden of Gethsemane was an orchard on the outside of town. He connected with God in places that were deserted and often wild. But that doesn't have to be your place. Sometimes I connect God well in a, connect with God well in a, in a crowd where the noise just kind of blends into the background energy, like a Panera or Starbucks. Maybe for you it's a trail. Maybe for you it's your basement. Where is your specific place? where you can connect with God without being distracted. When we got the most uh, recent snow, uh, I went out on a hike late at night uh, while the snow was still coming down pretty hard. It was about seven degrees plus wind and snow. So it, I, I was pretty bundled up. Not a lot of uh, skin showing at seven degrees at night uh, with wind and snow. Usually when I, when I do this, because I do enjoy doing this, these late night in the snow hikes because it's usually deserted. Usually the only tracks you can see are my own boot tracks. But this time, actually, a fellow crazy person had uh, left their tracks. It looked like a, a fat tire bike going through the snow sometime before me. Maybe they were connecting with God in the deserted, snowy landscape as I was. I've also invested in my ability to just sit outside on my porch. We got an infrared heater that hangs uh, right above where we sit on the, on the ceiling of our, of our covered patio. And so when I'm sitting directly underneath that heater, I can sit on our patio, look at the distant mountains and uh, behind my house, even if it's a little below freezing, that enables me to be alone outside on the patio, even if it's a snowy and especially if it's a snowy landscape. That's my place. What is your place to connect with God? And do you need to invest in your ability to spend time in that place, as I did by getting the infrared heater for my patio or making sure I had the right gear to go hiking in the snow? What is your place where you connect with God? That's our first tool. For our next tool from Jesus, we're going to we're gonna have to go there, people. We're going to have to talk about the S word, silence. Now, Jesus was silent and alone. That's our second tool, being silent and alone. A few years ago, Pastor Carol led a, uh, a mostly silent retreat. We were supposed to be silent other than the times we were gathered together as a group. And our group was not the most skilled at being silent. Uh, so, so what's so hard about silence? Sometimes when my, when my younger son is, you know, asking me a million questions, and my older son is, is banging away on his coffee cans that he uses as drums, silence sounds mighty nice. Archelaus, an ancient king of Macedon, was uh, in the barber's chair, and, and his barber, a typically gregarious fellow, asked the king how he would like his hair cut today, and the king responded, in silence. So silence... Silence can be golden, but you can also have awkward pauses. When you're public speaking, it, like every single second of silence feels like an eternity. Or when my children are suddenly very quiet after being their typically loud selves, I'm afraid something's wrong. So what's so tough about silence? The spiritual author Richard Foster took his best guess on this question, and he said, We are so accustomed to relying upon words to manage and control others. If we are silent, who will take control? God will take control, but we will never let him take control unless and until we trust him. Silence is intimately related to trust. I love that ending. I think it's very on point. Silence is intimately related to trust. It's kind of like, you know, if you're like on a first date and there's a lot of silence, it's probably a bad sign, right? Uh, but it's not always bad if there's a long pause when you've been married for a long time. Uh, it, it's a sign of trust. 
or your spouse might be mad at you. I'll leave that as an exercise to the hearer. So I believe part of our struggle with silence is that it requires trust. We have to trust that the world will, will actually keep spinning even if we are not exhaling our words. We have to trust that it's okay to, to be still instead of always doing something. We have to trust that, that God will be present as he was for Elijah in the sound of sheer silence. And we have to trust God enough to set the agenda in our, in our silence, for we have no words with which to guide the conversation. The Hawaiians uh, use the term haldi for non-natives. It is not a compliment. Uh, a native Hawaiian once told uh, Max Lucado that the term means no breath. And it was associated with European immigrants because uh, the, the, this Hawaiian said, our forefathers thought the settlers were always in a hurry to build plantations, to build harbors, to build ranches. To the native Hawaiians, they seemed short of breath. If that sounds familiar, if you feel like you're always in a hurry, stop and take a breath. If you feel like you're short on breath right now, short on the breath of God within your soul, spend some time in silence. Now, if, if you haven't spent a lot of time in silence before, it's probably going to feel like you know, slamming on the brakes in your car. It's going to be pretty jarring. But as you develop a habit of silence, as Jesus did, it becomes a welcome respite instead of a jarring stop. If you are out of breath, embrace some silence like Jesus did. Obviously, if you, uh, in our previous tool, if you chose one of those places like Panera or Starbucks, you know, the kind of places uh, to connect with God that are filled with people, that's not a good place to be silent and alone. You might need a different place or a different structure to, to get silent and alone. And also, I've spent a lot of time talking about silence, but I don't want to skip the alone part either. If you're an external processor, uh, you want to talk about the things you're thinking, right? That, that's how you work through them. That's great. But sometimes you also need to let God do the talking instead of you. Sometimes you need to let God be your sounding board instead of calling up a friend. Sometimes being alone, even for an external processor, even for an extrovert, sometimes alone is necessary. So we've heard about finding your place. That's our first tool. We've heard about being silent and alone. That's our second tool. Jesus' third tool for taking a breath is praying. Seeing a beautiful sunset, that, that's nice. It, it might even give you a little tingle of momentary peace but connecting that sunset with your creator through prayer, that cultivates peace throughout your entire life. It's prayer that can take that beautiful sunset and turn it into beauty within your soul. There are lots of different forms of prayer, but, but when you are trying to take a pause, to take a breath, to take a break, I would recommend saying and thinking as little as possible. Let God do the talking. Receive God's words instead of hurling your words or your thoughts at God. I've used uh, the image of cultivation as part of this sermon series. So imagine that we're, you're cultivating corn. In fact, let's imagine that you are the corn and someone is cultivating you. Can you, as a piece of corn, will yourself to grow taller? Can you, as a piece of corn, stress out yourself enough to, to grow more kernels? Can you, as a piece of corn, force your way to the top of the plant so that that other plant doesn't steal your sunshine? No. You, as a piece of corn, grow as you receive the sun, as you receive the rain, as you receive nutrients from the soil. So try to pray in a way that receives from God instead of throwing things at God. There's a song called uh, Word of God Speak that captures this image, I think. The chorus goes, Word of God speak, would you pour down like rain 
washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you are in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God, speak. To let God's words rain down. In any given season of life, it might be a gentle rain upon you. It, it might be just a drop or two. It might be a holy deluge. Receive God's words in prayer. In fact, while I was typing those words, the Holy Spirit squirted me with some of God's words and told me to send a note to a very specific person that I had neglected to do the last two times the Holy Spirit had prompted me. So I stopped right then writing the sermon and sent the note. When you, when you find your place, when you are silent and alone, when you pray to receive the nourishing rain of God's words, watch out. You're in a splash zone. It's like, it's like going to see Shamu at SeaWorld. If you sit in God's presence, you might get wet with the word of God. And like Shamu splashing you at SeaWorld, it would be a good thing to hear from God. Sisters and brothers, if you want to cultivate and practice peace within your life, no matter your circumstances, Jesus shows us how important it is to take a breath, to take a pause, to find a place where we can be silent and alone and pray, to receive God's words like nourishing rain. So where is your place? Where do you best connect with God? How can you intentionally go to that place this week? And do you have opportunities to be silent and alone with God? How can you seek or create those opportunities this week? And when was the last time you just sat and received God's words in prayer instead of throwing your words at him? When can you sit and listen to what God is saying this week. Taking a breath, it sounds easy when you say it, but we know it takes work. Jesus had to actively send the crowds away. He didn't just get to wait until there weren't crowds. He had to send them away. Jesus had to tell his disciples, you stay here. He had to manufacture his own deep breaths and pauses. He had to prioritize it and make the space because other things will always fill the space. We might have to manufacture those opportunities in our lives as well. They don't usually just naturally come. But if you do make space, if you find uh, a place where you can place yourself to be silent and alone in God's splash zone, I bet you will get a little bit wet with the word of God. And wouldn't that be a breath of fresh air? Amen.